Hey dolls! It's been a while since I've done a rat cage tour and I just redid the rat cage. I ordered two separate cages and stacked them together so that the babies have a whole new beautiful house and I wanted to share it with you in case you wanted to get some of your own tips and tricks. Also, speaking of tricks, I wanted to introduce you guys to my new baby. Trixie. She's in the back right here. And you guys remember Star. This is Star Lily. She's getting kind of old, but she's still such a sweetie. Um, but we have Trixie is a new member of our little family now. Um, you guys might remember Luna, Luna Rose. Um, I had her for a few years and unfortunately she passed away recently. Long story short, she did develop lumps and I asked vets about it and everything and they said because of her age and her size that surgery probably wouldn't be the best bet because she could pass away during surgery. And so they told me the best options were to either wait it out or have her put down. Um, we waited it out for quite a bit and uh, she really put up a fight, but in the end I couldn't stand seeing her suffer anymore, so I did choose to have her put down. And it was really hard, and it was really heartbreaking, and I cried a lot. And I held her in my arms for hours and hours afterwards. And we had a little burial for her and everything. But as you guys know, um, if you didn't already, rats are very, very, very social little creatures. And they need lots and lots and lots of companionship. Um, and sometimes they can't necessarily get that with a human. So getting them a friend or a cage mate is 100% necessary regardless of their gender. Um, obviously it's best to get one of the same sex. So right now, this little girl right here that you are seeing, that is Trixie. And we have recently welcomed her into our home. We've had her for over a month now. Oh goodness, Ratty sneezes. She is getting along very well with Star. I wanted to get Star a new companion because she didn't have Luna anymore and I really didn't want her getting lonely or even potentially dying of like a broken heart as harsh as that may sound. It is completely possible and true with little critters like this. They need that companionship and when they don't have it they get very lonely and sad. So this is Trixie and she is our precious little pride and joy and she is Star's new cage mate. So thank you guys so much for your love and support that you've given me with my babies through the years. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys know I aim to give the best life that I can to these little babies even though their lives are so short as it is. Um, anyway, so yeah, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and move on into this little rat mansion cage tour. Huh, Trixie? You ready to show them your new home? Are you ready to show them? All right, let's go. Okay, so here is the cage right here. And um, right about there is where the cutoff would be if it was just one of the cages. But as you can see, there's one, two, three, four doors. So right there is where they're kind of stacked on top of each other. So you can see right there. So I'm just going to start. Um, let's go from the top down. So up top right here. I have one of these little space pods or Sputniks. I got this from Chewy.com. I get a lot of my um, rat stuff there for like little houses like this and some of their lab blocks for their food and everything. Um, I get those off of Chewy.com because they're a lot cheaper than like PetSmart and Petco sometimes. Plus if you spend over $50 you get free shipping so that's nice. Um, right here I have a little hammock that has little duckies on it that I ordered from someone off of eBay. And there is little Trixie back there. Welcome Trixie to the family. Um, and then I get these little kind of microfiber cloths from my local Dollar Tree. So I like to put those in there just as nesting material or blankets. Um, there are these little pink paper worms all over the place throughout the cage, which you guys will see. Um, they love to use that as nesting material and just scatter it around everywhere. So you will see it all over the place. This is Star. Hi, Star. So there is that hammock right there. It does have like a little hidey hole in there, but they just love like 
putting food and just hiding everything right there. So um, this hammock right here, I made myself out of fleece. It is just a corner hammock and then it's a no sew style. So it just has like tons of little knots tied. And so that they can bounce on this to get up higher. They love climbing so much. Um, for these little levels, they actually came with the cage. Um, and you can see they are wire. You do not want wire for your little ratties because they will run back and forth on them and they will develop little sores on their feet called bumblefoot. And it is very bad. It's basically just like really severe blisters and it's horrible. So you always want to cover your wire if you have a cage like this with some sort of material. These are actually just thigh high socks, like knee socks that I ordered on AliExpress. You can get them super cheap basically anywhere though and you can pick from tons of different designs. But I just basically um, put them on there as if it were, you know, like an actual sock. <laughs> just kind of like on the leg. And then I cut off the bottom. So there's that. I have two of those little platforms side by side right there. In the back, I have their one of their food bowls. Um, I'm not going to get into their food just yet. I'll mention that in a different um, clip or video or something. But the recipe that I use for their food, I got from the Rat Guru here on YouTube. And I will leave that video with the recipe in the description box if you want that recipe for yourself. Uh, right here, I do have a water bottle. And this is a lava ledge. I get these off of either Chewy.com or at PetSmart. Um, I found somewhere, I think it was also the Rat Guru, I'm not 100% sure, but if you put a lava ledge underneath of the water bottle, uh, these are meant to kind of sand down or trim down your rat's uh, claws. So the fact that they have to jump on this that actually helps them to sand down their claws every time they get a drink. So they're constantly getting a little manicure without even knowing it. And these are awesome because they can also chew on them to keep their teeth down. Sorry if I get winded throughout this video. There's a lot to talk about. Um, right in here, I don't know if I can really show this, but there is a little rope bridge that I made out of the same fleece. I just kind of braided it together and attached it with little shower hooks. I forgot to mention that the hooks I use to hook on that hammock um, are just little binder rings like this. So binder rings, shower hooks, they're both really good. And then there's also these kinds of hooks that you can find. These came with this hammock and the other one I'm going to show you in a minute um, from the one that I ordered off of eBay from this seller. So uh, you can use these as well. They're really great also. Okay, moving on. I'll go ahead and shut that door. Then we will move on to this door right here. So back there is just a little banana chew that I got off of Chewy.com as well. And then I have this little uh, dish that's right here it is actually like a bird dish. Uh, my rats are really good about not chewing up plastic. They don't really tend to chew up the hard plastic like this. So I like to get them little things like this because I don't use it as a food bowl. I use it as kind of like a toy bowl and then they can kind of just like use it as a ledge or a platform to kind of jump up onto something else so there is that then I got this little wooden hideaway uh, they haven't been chewing this I kind of got it so that they would chew on it and not like the cage itself because the old cage that I had they would chew up the sides um, and they couldn't like chew through it or anything because it was a metal wire cage like this. But I just didn't want them chewing on metal. Like it's not healthy for them. So I got them stuff like this and like the banana chew uh, to kind of detour them from chewing the actual cage. And they're not chewing on this, which I don't mind. But they kind of just like climb up on it to get to the next level or whatever. Then I got this little bowl from Walmart quite a while back when I first got my, or when I first got my original rat cage. Um, but it's just a cute little cat bowl and this one right here uh, that was in the back This is also a cat bowl. I found at PetSmart. I forgot to tell you guys that so um, I always get the ceramic ones because it's harder for them to knock them over because they are heavier 
This right here is a honeycomb hammock that I got from the same seller. It was in a two-pack set type thing. So it came with this hammock and this hammock as well. They don't really go in this one as much. They love being at the very top of the cage to actually sleep, but they do like using this as like an extra little level and stuff. Um, over here is a quick little DIY that you guys can do. Uh, mine love to use toilet paper as nesting material. So what I did is I cut a paper towel or a toilet paper roll and I cut just down the center of it and then I kind of hooked it around the cage and put some toilet paper in here so that they can kind of dig this out and take it up to their bed or hide their food or whatever. And then they can also chew on the roll when um, it's all gone and they just want to play with something. Again, trying to detour them from chewing on the actual cage itself. What are you doing, Star? But this bowl right here is usually the bowl. You can see it's kind of stained right now. I put their fresh <laughs> fruits and veggies in here. Um, so daily I'll give them some sort of fruit or veggie just chopped up nicely. Um, sometimes I do a mix of it. Sometimes I'll just do just one thing, just kind of a lot of it. Um, sometimes I'll do carrots, apples, strawberries, blueberries. Uh, today I have plum, so they took some plum up in this little hammock and hid it up there. But yeah, I'll, I'll occasionally do the, or I'll, all the time, not occasionally, I'll frequently do the fresh fruits and veggies all washed and chopped up for them because that's good for them and they like it. Okay, shutting that door, moving on to the third door. Um, down here I have this little, I'm going to go ahead and take it out. I took a wire hanger. I found this DIY on Pinterest and I just took a wire hanger and kind of wrapped it around itself and made it into a circle. And then I just took tons of strips of fleece and just made little knots and kind of made this kind of wreath type thing for them to kind of climb on and just jump through and all that. So that is there. Back here in this very corner, I have this little basket that I got from Dollar Tree and I have it rigged to the cage with um, like a washers and wing nuts and stuff so that they can't kind of move this basket around, but they can grab all their little toys out and play with them. <laughs> Hi, Star Lily. Um, so I got these little wicker balls off of Chewy. Um, <laughs> Hi, baby. And then I just have some random like plastic Hello Kitties in here. Sometimes they like to pick them up and bat them around the cage and stuff. I have some chew toys that they haven't really chewed up just yet. Um, but these wicker balls and stuff, like I said, I get them off Chewy in like little three packs for like five or six bucks. Um, they don't tend to go through them too quick, which is really nice because they kind of last a while. Um, then right here I just have a random Dixie cup. I just kind of threw this in here to see if they do anything with it because I've never done that before. But these are also a great option to create your own toys. You can puncture a hole in the bottom, string them, string some fleece through it, hang it to the side of the cage. They can kind of knock it around and play with it. They, uh, like I said, I haven't done that just yet. I've only just thrown this in here to see what they do with it. Then over here I have this pink bucket that again I have held on the side with uh, wing nuts and washers. And um, again, shower hooks just to kind of sturdy the, the little handle. Uh, but in here I have these little worms that I said would be all around the cage. And this is where I put them along with just a piece of fleece on the bottom so that they can come in here and hide or nest or whatever if they want to. So Star will get in here and grab mouthfuls of this and take it all the way to the top of the cage and put it in her little hammock. So they are really enjoying this. So I highly recommend shredded paper and just little things like this. They absolutely love nesting with it and playing with it. Then right here I just have another one of those little corner hammocks I have held on with binder um, hooks or binder clasps or rings or whatever you want to call them. And again, it's just one of the no-sew ones so that they can just jump up here and climb up. Star is being very camera friendly in this video. <laughs> Alright, then closing this up, we're going to go to the very bottom level. 
and so usually I line the bottom with fleece, but this time I'm actually almost out of fleece and I have to go to Walmart to get more. So right now I just have lined on the bottom one of those microfiber cloths from Dollar Tree. Um, a lot of the times they used to rip up the fleece from the bottom of the cage. So I'm gonna move this so I can show you guys. So I found this little, um, sorry for the mess back there. They like to make messes of their cage right after I clean them and stuff, so ignore that. But I found this little cooling uh, stone, and it's actually for chinchillas, so the chinchillas don't get overheated, because if you guys have ever had them, or if you're aware, um, chinchillas overheat really quickly, so having little ledges like this for them to stand on or lay on is really great, um, because it keeps them cool and stuff. But, I got this off of Chewy.com for like five or six dollars or something, and it's sturdy enough and heavy enough to hold down the fleece so the rats can't rip it up from the bottom. And I'm actually wanting to get a second one to put over on this side. So that is really cool. I love it so much and they're so easy to clean because you can just take them out, soak them in some hot water and they're good to go. Um, they do kind of pee a little bit on them, but not near as bad as you would assume or you would think. So I love these so much. I highly recommend them for rat owners because the edges aren't sharp. They're meant to go in an animal's cage. You don't have to go to Home Depot and like cut your own stone. It's not expensive. And I just, I love these and I really highly recommend them. Uh, we have another lava ledge right here. You can see this one has been well loved and well chewed on. Then we have this food bowl right here. I just got at, it's kind of like a local grocery store, and this is meant to put like condiments and stuff in. Um, so I just have that. Again, it's a really heavy duty ceramic bowl. And again, their little food mix is in there. So I have their food accessible on the bottom and top levels as well as the water. I have another water bottle right here. I forgot to mention, both of the water bottles are from PetSmart. Um, and then I have another la level, lava ledge, excuse me, I can't talk. I have another lava ledge um, right here underneath of this water bottle. So again, they have to jump up on it to get their drink of water. Then in the back right here, I'm not going to zoom up too close because it is dirty right now. Um, that is their little litter pan. I ordered this a long time ago off of eBay uh, back when I got Luna. And I'm not sure if they still have them on there or not but they have similar ones because I was just on there the other day but I don't know if you can find the pink ones anymore. Uh, right there is what I like to call the pee rock because rats especially females they like to pee on rocks and kind of like mark their territory so I encourage them to come down to the litter pan to pee and poop. Um, they've been really good about not peeing everywhere in this cage. In their old cage, they would pee all over their blankets, all over the place, because they're constantly, you know, marking their territory and everything. But I feel like the pee rock has really, really helped. Also, it does help anchor down this little tray so that they don't try to rip it out or anything like that. And I just, I like that a lot. And again, that's really easy to clean. You can just take it down, take it out, spray it down with a hose and put it back in and it's good to go. So it's not like stinking up all the time or anything like that. Um, then down here, I just have this little magnetic Hello Kitty I got out of a uh, Happy Meal years ago. I don't even remember, but because the bottom is um, metal, it does magnetize to like the sides and the roofs and everything like that. So I just have that right there to help kind of anchor down the, the fleece that I have lined down here along with this bowl. It's kind of wedged in here right now. I can't really get it out, but I have a little bowl kind of wedged in there. Um, it hasn't hurt them at all or anything like that. It just helps kind of anchor down the fleece in this corner so they can't dig it up. Again, that's just temporary. I'm going to be getting another one of these slabs and putting it over in this corner. So that bowl will definitely come out, but that's only temporary for now. So they don't keep digging the fleece up right here. Um, and again, since their cage is a lot bigger and they have more climbing space and more things to do, they don't tend to rip up the fleece anymore. 
Uh, right here, I just have a little igloo that I got forever ago at either Petco or PetSmart. You can get them at both. Um, this is too small for rats to go into. I'm aware of that. Um, they don't actually go in here. I basically just use this as a temporary fix. Um, I plan to get another one of these lava ledges and put it on the other side right over there so that they can jump down from that level to here. But for now, I just have this igloo in here so that they can climb on top of it and climb up. Again, they don't really go in there. They just kind of like push it out of the way so that they can rip up the paper and stuff I have back there. Um, so I don't know. It's just, again, temporary until I can figure out something else. And then in the back, there is a little rat chew that is hooked to the wall, again, to kind of detour them from chewing the paper or the cage, which clearly isn't working as much. They don't like to chew the toys that I spend money on them to chew or spend money on for them to chew. They prefer just chewing up what they're not supposed to chew up. <laughs> so um, that's why I decided to go ahead and give them all that little paper so they can kind of chew that up and play with it as they so choose. But yep, this little thing is just temporary. Um, but I think that is everything. But yeah, a lot of these DIYs you can actually find on Pinterest. I'll go ahead and leave the link to my Pinterest board on rat DIYs in the description box below. So if you guys want to uh, make something for your own babies or um, it even works for ferrets or sugar gliders. Um, a lot, Some stuff even works for guinea pigs. So if you want to check that out, you definitely can. But I think that is everything that I was going to mention. I'll go ahead and flash right here and show you guys. This is my rat food recipe. Uh, like I said, you can go ahead and also check out the Rat Guru's full video all about this. Uh, I'll leave it in the description box, but um, I mix it all together in this big airtight tub that you can get like at Walmart and stuff. And then once it's mixed up in there, I'll actually transfer it to a container like this. These containers I got on eBay. Um, and then I just refill their food dishes with this big container. And then once this is empty, I'll just keep refilling. So there is that. Um, I also have other random toys like these chew toys again from like Chewy or PetSmart. But for the most part, that is my rat cage tour. Um, I really, really wanted to get another litter pan and put it like up here somewhere. Because I had originally thought that they might start getting lazy and not going all the way down to the bottom to do their business. So I really wanted to get a second litter pan to put right here. But unfortunately it won't fit through the doors and I don't want to have to like maneuver it up through all these levels um, every time I go to change the litter pan because a lot of the times the litter pan is dirty but like the fleece and stuff here they haven't been pooping or peeing they don't poop in it obviously they're litter trained but um they aren't peeing on it as much as I thought they would so I don't think I'm gonna have to change out the fleece as often as I used to but I know that I'll have to switch out the litter in the litter pans at minimum once a week I usually like to do it twice a week but um it doesn't fit through here so I'm wondering if I should kind of like rig up my own or just keep it this way because I'm really impressed. I've had this cage up for almost a week now and they actually do go all the way down to the bottom to poop. So I really like that. I appreciate that they do that. They're not getting lazy or anything. And it also encourages them to get extra exercise. So I might just keep it this way for a while until I can figure out maybe if I can rig up another one or DIY one that'll fit in there or something. I'm sure I could get like a short little pan from like Dollar Tree and have it be like this size. Kind of like these little baskets but have the sides be enclosed rather than with holes in them. And then I could just rig it up to the cage with the little washers and wing nuts and then just fill it with their litter. And the only thing I love about this litter pan is the grate on top because otherwise they will like make a huge mess of the litter. They like to kind of grab it out and take it upstairs as bedding. So I 
I like the gate a lot on there. So if you guys have any tips or ideas or tricks or um, litter box DIYs that I can use that would fit through here, uh, let me know. I would be very interested in trying to fix one up for them. Uh, but for now, this is what we have for our little rat cage tour. And I hope you all enjoyed it. Star says, thank you for watching. <laughs> I gotta close you up so we can go say bye to Trixie. And Trixie loves climbing. She goes up and down and all around in all the different places. She loves this cage so much. She's always so hyper. There she is. Hi, Trix. So Trixie says goodbye and thank you for watching the video. <laughs> there she goes in her little Sputnik space pod. And they make these in different colors and stuff as well, but I just got this one. I didn't really mind the color of it or anything. It doesn't really match the cage theme, but they like it, and that's what really matters. So, anyway, yes, that is my rat cage tour. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I will leave the link to my Pinterest board in the description box below. So, if you want to check out any DIYs <laughs> or anything of your own, you definitely can do that. I have no idea what Star is doing right here. She's being crazy. Um, but yeah, and then also the food will be linked below. And thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I will see you all next time. So long. Stay strong. Stay true. And be you. All right.